Hey everyone, um, welcome on our tutorial dedicated to timecode. Yes, I finally decided to make a tutorial in English um, dedicated to timecode, how to create a timecoded show, how to, and a couple of different options, and some of the tips and tricks how to make your uh, how to make your show powerful and as quickly as it possibly can. And I will divide this tutorial into the three parts. So this is the general part, this is the first part, and I would suggest you to watch it in full, and then you watch the second part and the third part. Why three parts? Because I need to show you three different methods how to create a time-coded show. You can combine them in uh, whenever you watch all three video tutorials you will be able to combine all three methods to to create your show file but uh, I would strongly advise you to watch all three separately but one after another. So um, what is a time code? A lot of people get confused. What is a time code? How to run it, etc. So, time code is basically an external source of the time code that sends um, a data through different methods. That could be via MIDI cable, uh, via a MIDI time code, LTC time code, or Artnet time code. But basically, it's a different. Uh, it's the way to synchronize your lighting show to the sound or the time code that comes from sound and normally on the setups you have um, like normally in most of the cases you have one source of the time code and then all other, all other devices are basically synced to that. So what it means is in, the, in most of the tours you're going to have a main primary source of time code that's going to be a sound. So sound will start the time code and then the lighting will link to that time code and trigger all everything relates to the lighting to that according to the music so in sync with the music and at the same time video guys will be uh, listening to the same time code and they will be triggering their own stuff so that way you can synchronize your uh, soundtrack to the lighting to the video and so not to get confused with the sound to light it's two different things and the, the time code doesn't automatically getting created for you and suddenly with one button press you have everything running no it will take some time but i will show you all three methods that we support and okay so without any more information i will go uh, we'll go from there. So basically, I'm, in this in this first part, I'm going to show you where the timecode menu is uh, in the settings, and also I'll show you how to create a queue list or queue stack based timecode. That's a simple way of creating a queue stack show, a uh, timecode show. So first of all, let me show you where the timecode settings are. So if you click on the setup button, and then you go to the uh, MIDI timecode option. So at the moment I'm running 1830 alpha version. That is uh, obviously um, uh, sort of current for me but not current for you guys. What it means is um, what that means is um, that some of the things if you start if you work with and some some of the things may not work correctly uh, or is anything uh, doesn't work exactly as, as happened on my system uh, feel free to uh, to obviously let us know otherwise if it works on my system that means whatever bug or anything if you have in your system always uh, you will always know that he, this has been fixed in the further version. So always uh, you can see the, the latest versions that we use in our tutorials are actually showing that something has been fixed if you come, if you come across anything that doesn't work right. Okay, so um, right, okay, so in the setup time code, MIDI timecode menu, you have the different options related to the timecode. That's the first six options in this menu. There's more information you can find in the manual, but I'll just briefly tell you what they are. So first of all, the, 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 the fourth option here is called timecode decode. So basically, if you double click this, it will give you the options of um, the methods you can use to receive the external timecode from. So the console by itself can generate internal timecode for your testings, etc. But if you're receiving external timecode from the other sources, these are the options that we support. So in your case, you are not going to have that option. This is a bit further down uh, in the development, but um, you have the option of receiving LTC or SEMPTI protocol, uh, MIDI 
if you have a device so I'm using computer version but you if you have a physical console you may have the MIDI timecode um, apart from MQ40 and MQ60 users you do uh, your desk does not support MIDI timecode or LTC timecode uh, actually those two consoles do not support timecode at the moment if something changes in the future then uh, this is I'm talking about the uh, uh, what's happening in February 2019. Anyway, then there's an Artnet option. You can send it uh, MIDI timecode via Artnet. You can we support the Winamp uh, and the USB options, USB MIDI. If you're using, if you're using, say, if your Magic U uh, software is fully unlocked, then you can use the USB MIDI uh, dongles, uh, third-party interfaces to receive the MIDI timecode. So you can use it for this. Uh, for time being, you can ignore the other options here. So. Um, yeah, we keep it as a non. Then the other option here, you it's going to be probably useful for you to know. If you're sending SMPT or if you're sending MIDI as well, so normally they can tell you how many frames per second uh, the source is sending. What it means is, if you want to make sure that your uh, time code is fully synced uh, with the uh, external source, so normally they will send you, say, uh, LTC, maybe with a 30 frames per second. So you need to make sure that the time code frame type you have to set to the correct one. So if it's 25 frames per second, you choose the first option. If it's a 30 frames per second, you choose either of these options. 24 frames, you choose that option. So otherwise, you're going to have uh, not entirely synced uh, time codes that, uh, between the devices. Okay, the other option is the continuous frames. So as far as I know, this option allows you to, um, to uh, t this option allows the magic queue to continue doing what it's supposed to do within the timecode if by some reason you've lost the, uh, the timecode signal. This is normally sometimes may happen to the external media signal and for this case you can just say for example if you want the console to continue uh, continue uh, doing whatever steps it has to do like it hasn't lost the, the ex external timecode you can actually type in the values here so for example if you want the system to run extra three seconds uh, then when even if the say MIDI time code disappears you can type here so 3 times 25 frames that's going to be 75 frames so if you type 75 and enter that means for the extra 3 seconds the, the, the magic will continue running the time code at show so normally if the MIDI time code disappears or stops the, your time code will stop as well this option allows you uh, to continue working like nothing happened and if the time code uh, reappears again then it will continue working from there and another option here is going to be um, jump detect frames so basically this allows you to make sure that the system is continue working in case you're receiving non-consistent uh, time code from external source and it's slightly jumpy so if you s set this option correctly that means it will ignore some sporadic uh, time code that's uh, coming from external source and also another option that will be good for you to know is a time code backwards jumps. So if you double click here, you have advanced backward jump and a backward jump one second. What that means is, uh, in some cases, as from from our experience, is we know that some of the time code generating sources, when stopped, have a tendency of sort of going a um, couple of frames back. You know, it's like when you're stopping, it just stops and then like rewinds a couple of frames back. And if this is crucial, that may affect your programming. You can actually set it, say, backward jumps if it's more than one second. So basically, if you switch this one on, that means if the time code stopped, and then suddenly rewinded itself a couple of frames back, it will be fully ignored and the uh, Magic is not going to rewind anything back because it will ignore that fact because it's less than one second. Again, this is a bit more advanced, but for you, in most of the cases, all you'll have to do is just to switch on the time code decode and switch on the time frame uh, type to the correct one. So, uh, when we've set our MIDI time code and all the settings, uh, let's start with the first method of recording a time code show, and this method is uh, Q stack based time code. So, how to do this? So, first of all, let's create uh, a Q stack. 
like if you already know that you will be running it as a time coded show i will always advise you to create a dummy step the first step that you're going to start with and the first step is always going to be say 0000, zero, zero, zero time so it's going to be the very very starting point for this we'll just press you don't need to select anything you just press record and let's say you click on the uh, on the empty playback so now we've created a dummy step and there's nothing recorded it's only empty step so let's go with and create uh, some of the uh, like let's say six seven steps so we're going to select the lights press like eight uh, palette position record click on the top so we'll create a second step and then fan out color record here and then we're going to do for example all up cyan record here again it's just you can do whatever you want with this if you if you don't have this show file you basically can load it from the demo show files so if you press setup load show and choose in a demo folder it's called chauvet uh, chauvet.shw it's a chauvet show file so then we can press clear and then for example we can select uh, rogue fixtures we will make them certain color let's say uh, let's say yellow and um, yeah we can probably set uh, well no okay we're gonna set it as a uh, as they were so we're gonna record that as a step one uh, another step and then I'm gonna do something like that and I go record another step I press clear then I'm going to go Rogue R2 Wash, change the color, uh, maybe yeah, magenta, and I'm going to make some position out of them. So I'm going to move them towards the wall and fan them like that. Okay, let's say I'm happy about it. I press record and I click it here. So now what we did is we've created a playback with the seven steps. So if you double click, it shows us all the seven steps, Q stack. At the moment it's running as a chase, so we need to convert it into the Q stack. We press Q timing and press yes. Now it's it's a Q stack and we can set the fade time. Let's say click here and say two seconds fade and press enter. So now we have two seconds fade. And to be honest, I mean for the first step I don't actually need two seconds because it's the it's the instant queue and it's empty queue. I will select it, press zero, enter. So now we have all this. So now it will work as a queue stack. So if I run this, I press go, you have the first step, as you can see it works, second step, third step, fourth, fifth, oh and the seventh, the last step. Okay, so how to convert that one to be your time code show? How can you program it? To do this, all you have, uh, what you do is you, you see you have a, um, um, a a column called halt. So when you click on this, it's selected as yes. Then you click anywhere here, like on this area. Yeah, you click here, and then you choose the option, say time code. So when you click it you will see your weight column changed from from the other option into the time code uh, time code stamps so you can see here that <coughs> there you can see here that your time code uh, it automatically set some timing for each step say one second two second three second four five six etc but that's not how we want of course we would like to program it properly and do it as the time that we want so what you have here is so if you run it you will see that the time code starts the time code automatically starts and it goes from step to step see it goes step by step for you so how can you program those timing yourself so to do this you have to click and select all the columns like that and if you hold the shift button that or if I'm using my keyboard, I hold shift and there's a button here called record TC, record time code. So when you click on this, it shows you the current time it has and it shows you the sign called rec, meaning it is ready to record steps. And as soon as I raise my fader, the time code starts and it waits for me to press go. 
and you can see it record the timestamp correctly. And next step, next step, next step, and next step. So now I can put the fader down, and you can see you've got all the steps recorded with the correct times uh, with the correct timing that I've set. I can start the cue stack again. I raise the fader, the time code starts, and as soon as it hit the correct number, it starts loading each step individually. That way, if you already created the queue stack, or let's say master queue stack, you will be able to actually time code it to the, in my case, I'm running internal time code. Of course, uh, the whole point of this exercise to show you how to create queue stack, uh, the time coded queue stack, but at the same time, if you are planning to run it from the external source, when you set your external source in the setup window, you can actually go here and you see it says TC, it means time code, and it shows internal. So if you want to switch it to the external source, uh, you will be able to click on this and it says change time code to external source. You press yes. Now it will be waiting for you to change to the external. So it, it's waiting for you, uh, it's waiting to receive the external source. So at the moment there is nothing. And uh, obviously it's not going to do anything, but you can also simulate external time code by pressing TC simulation off. You click on this and you actually uh, switch on external simulation. So that means you will be able to, at the moment it says uh, playback inactive. So if you run it, it waits for you. You will be able to press go. So you see it starts and you can actually uh, test it if, like, like if you're receiving external time code, you can uh, stop. So if you want to restart your TC time code, you can stop it by pressing on this button. Then what you do is you set set 0, 0, 0, 0, and then you click on this column. So it goes to 0. See? So it's, you sort of can uh, test external time code before you actually receive it from the external source and then you click on it again and then it starts running and you can test if everything is working exactly to the timing you expect it to do. Then if you want to go back, you can just go back to the internal time code and you start from there. Uh, again, you can see the external time code is still running in a simulation. To do this, you just click on this again. It says internal simulation is off, change back to the internal and then you can continue working from here. So one of the important things that I have to sort of, uh, I need to tell you about is this. So time code is, um, it's like a linear, well, it's a linear system that normally goes like a time code on other systems called timeline. It always goes from left to right. So what it means is that means all the steps needs to go in as ascend, the timing in, the, in those steps needs to go in ascending order. What it means is if your first step is zero, the next step has to be more than zero and the step following that needs to be more than the this previous step etc so if you want to see it in other way if you click on the when the queue is select if you press the timeline button and you click on the view timeline you will be able to actually preview it say this is your first empty step and you see the second step has got a timing of two seconds 84 and then the next one is 6 seconds 16. So the step number 3 cannot be before the step number 2 because it's a linear function. So if you raise it, it has to go from left to right and cannot go like sort of first step, third step, second step, etc. So as you can see, it's all running correctly here. So, but of course, there might be situation where you actually need to change your step timing. So for example, let's say if the step number four, which says nine seconds, actually have to be started when it's a five second that's coming from the time code, you can manually change it. So all you have to do is to change it to five seconds. You select it, type five, as a five seconds and press enter. That way 
it will become five seconds. Here's the problem, because now it brings the conflict that you see it brings you then the star, the star button, uh, the star symbol, and that shows you that there is an error. That means this timing is actually before the previous timing mentioned in the previous step. So if you're gonna try to run the Q stack now, it will not work correctly. So to fix this. Of course, there are several methods. One of them is to change the step number to the previous one, so it's a t two point say five, and then it will go to the correct place. But there is actually a much faster way to do it. If you press renum reorder, it will tell you, would you like to renumber by QID? No, in our time we need to do it record uh, as the order time, uh, uh, reorder by time code. So now this step has been moved from step number four, it became 2.1 and it's a five second. So let's test it now. So we raise the queue, started, second step, then 2.1 and so on and so forth. So as you can see, you fixed it pretty quickly. Again, this is for, as I said, you can do it in the two ways, uh, is you can either rename the, the step and then renumber it by QID or you can do it Per, uh, time code. So in my version, it's all working fine, as you can see. It's um, uh, because sometimes people just say like, "Oh, it doesn't do it." I will say, "Yeah, it it works." So and uh, as you can see, you can quickly change from step to step, and so on and so forth. So if you want the 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 queue stack always display the current queue, that means if you have a lot of steps and you want to make sure you can always see it, make sure you switch on display current queue, and it will always demonstrate to you the correct timing. Also, if you want to change the timing manually, like slight adjustments, you can always select the step and then use the encoder E to adjust it to the correct value. And you can see I can do the manual change. If you want to offset multiple steps by X amount of seconds, you can also do it this way. If you select, say, three steps and you want to update it, say, plus two seconds, it's offset for all this for example, for the first three steps, you can select the multiple steps, press the button here, and says plus two seconds. That will change. So that will change the the number after plus. It's a two seconds plus. So if you press enter, you can see it changed two seconds extra. So if I press it again and say minus two seconds, it will change it back. If you want to update, say a track number so you can see it starts with 0000, zero, 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 zero and you actually would like to uh, because you're preparing for the external time code you want to do as a track numbers then when you select it you will press this button and press plus one for example it's a track number but then as you can see the format needs to be hours or track number minutes seconds and frames so in order for you this one to be actually a track number you select plus one and you type slash dash slash so this is relates to that slash that slash and this division here as well and you press enter you're gonna see that it actually makes it now as one hour opposed to just updating seconds so this is something that some people don't know how to do so again if you want to remove then the track number and make it all zero again when it's all selected you click the button here press minus one and then slash 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 and now it's all changed back to the correct. Again, this is the first method and stay tuned. I'll show you two other methods. Thank you very much and thanks for watching and uh, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you.